This is Dr. Jonathan Hansen. I'm the president of both World Ministries International as well as Eagles Saving Nations. If you want to know what that's all about, Eagles Saving Nations, go to my website, worldministries.org, worldministries.org. If you just read it, I know you want to join it because it's it has to do with a national revival, a national repentance, a great awakening to stop the insanity that you and I are seeing on a daily basis all through the America, all through the government. I'll tell you, God needs to be in charge again. I have with me my friend, apostolic leader, Dennis Moore, uh, coming from Dallas, Texas. Uh, Dennis, welcome to the Warning Program. Yes, thank you, Dr. Hansen. Pleasure to be here. Well, also, Dennis, happy birthday. Hey, I won't tell you what it is, but... <laughs> What number, but yeah. This very birthday. day is your was is your birthday. Yes, amen. I tell you what, um, I'm glad you're alive. I'm glad that you were born. Well, thank you, and uh, I appreciate that. You know, it is. It's good to have a birthday and know that uh, you get to celebrate God's goodness, and you get to uh, live a life for Him. And and there and you know every time we have a birthday, it's just another opportunity to uh, draw closer to him. Well, amen, amen, amen. And it's fun to to celebrate birthdays with with those you love and uh, those that are with you and stand with you. And uh, and so uh, you and I have been friends for a long time now, and yeah. I enjoy every year being with you when you're over here in ministry at at WMI. I enjoy being uh, with you at your house. We've also been together uh, like in Kenya before. And so it's it's fun being together because we are like-minded. We are serious with Christ. We understand the kingdom. We understand the failures of the church. We understand, again, uh, the nation, how it rises or falls. Or uh, We understand these things, and we're both members of Eagle Saving Nations. So, uh, Dennis, it's, it's uh, always fun to be with you. Well, likewise, and uh, you know, I I know we're going to be overseas uh, even more together. I'm looking forward to it. You know, um, God is moving in the earth today, and He's moving in some extraordinary ways. And we just came back from doing a conference here in Southern Texas, and uh, kind of a cowboy area, but you know, uh, God's stirring. He's stirring, and we were at. Um, uh, we were right next to Texas uh, A&M, big university, over 100,000 students. And the pastor we were with told me that every Monday night, there's 30,000 students that gather together in their big indoor auditorium, basketball arena, and 30,000 gather together for prayer and worship. Man, that is just tremendous. Tremendous. And as as we're trying to you know, get Eagle Saving Nations, we get into the stadiums across America and around the world. Uh, you could tap into that and get into that stadium, Dennis. Well, you know, we're we're we're, we're talking to him about that. Um, you know, God gave some very powerful prophetic words when we were there, and one of them was to uh, create a youth a fire among the youth. And we had several kids that came back from camp, and they were totally on fire for God. And I said, let's just build on this fire and let's keep it going. Uh, let's let's see revival take place. His father was a evangelist and and uh, went all over the world preaching the gospel. And many, many, many people got saved. You know, tens of thousands of people, many uh, healings, and and um, and the Lord told him to build this big, huge church out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it's just on the country road, and it's and it seats probably about eight hundred. But there's maybe uh, 70 people, 80 people in the church. But the Lord told me, he said, there's going to be revival here, and you won't be able to put all the people on this building. And he said, wow. and he, he bought 13 acres so he could put a huge tent up and use that tent as the revival grows. They're going to go into a tent because they can keep expanding the tent out and out. And uh, so he's, he's at the heart of, of what the Lord's doing. He's got a passion, and he just... He's a, a championship winning football coach, and now he's retiring and becoming full time in the ministry. And he's excited that, you know, he feels like he's in the right in the flow of what God's doing. Name is Nick. His wife's name is Brandy. Wonderful couple. And uh, we just were delighted to be with them. Well, I'd love to meet him. Uh, 
We need to bring them on our on our side, part of uh, Eagle Saving Nations, and uh, and make this thing really happen in in Texas. Amen. It, you know, it's so exciting to hear that thirty thousand uh, students are gathering to worship God every Monday. Wow. And yeah, and that's I, I think I think that's kind of the um, what can we say the the model for what we want to do. You know, we want to fill up these stadiums, and um, and it's happening. That's the type of point people we want, Dennis. So, yes. uh, man, we we need to recruit him. Oh, absolutely. Now, I, we movement. want to talk about today. I mean, um, I know this is the title that you gave me, Living a Life That Empowers Your Partner. Living a Life That Empowers Your Partner. Um, you know, it's I've got a message that I'm going to speak. I prepared it. But uh, so far, I haven't had time here uh, to the staff of World Ministries International because uh, different other messages I had to share. And then, uh, but I'm going to be sharing it, God and Marriage. And so uh, this is very, you know, the title is pretty close, but um, I've got, I'll just ha read you the opening paragraph. Marriage is God's government on earth. This is the reason why traditional marriage is under attack by the United Nations and the United States of America. They are replacing traditional marriage between a man and a woman with alternate lifestyles. In other words, anything different than traditional marriage can be called a family. It can be a marriage between two men, two women, a person, a building, an animal. One man and three women are just living in open fornication. Then I go to the second paragraph. Why is biblical marriage under attack? In marriage, the man respects Jesus. The woman re represents, I should say, the man represents Jesus and respects Jesus. And the woman represents the church, the bride. They are to be totally dedicated to each other and trust in one another. They are to forgive one another and not bring up each other's past to hold against them or bring attack on them. Satan is the accuser of the brethren. Satan knows if he tears apart Christian couples, he is tearing down the perfect image of Jesus and his sacrifice in the church. Dennis? You know, it says in Ephesians 5.33, however, each one of you must love his wife as he loves himself. That's a powerful statement. I've got and that in my wife, notes too. <laughs> yeah. And the wife must respect her husband. Amen. Now, there there was a program that Dr. Dobson did. And when he did the program, it uh, it was basically about wives respecting the husband. And they never had such a response. So many men were so powerfully affected by that message. And many of the uh, men that uh, were hearing the message on the radio, coming home from work, pulled off the road, and some, and many of them cried because they, they felt like that was the message that they wanted their wife to know. Now, the University of Washington did a 10-year study. And the question they were asking was, what is the basic, most primary need for a woman, and what is the basic, most primary need for men? And after 10 years of studying all these people and asking all these questions, they, they boil it all down to two things. The woman needs love, and the man needs respect. Wow. And so uh, it's, it just brings it down to the issue that uh, if we, as a man, if we love our wife, we're empowering her. Yes, we're giving her her most basic need. If we put, if we make her our primary concern, if the wife respects the husband and shares with the husband, not being critical of him, uh, but rather uh, encouraging him and speaking about the things that she admires in him. Now, one of the things uh, that's central to the uh, core concept is that by nature, men don't naturally love their wives 
And by nature, women don't naturally respect their husbands. It's a learned behavior. And uh, even the scripture says, put on love. In other words, you know, learn to love. Learn, and so it's a it's a learning process. But for the man, he has to learn what? To lay his life down, like Christ laid down his life for the church. For the woman, she has to learn to respect the husband when at times she, she feels more disrespect than she does respect. But if, if the if the if the man will love the, the wife according to the word of God, it will empower the wife. She'll feel special, she'll feel like she's the greatest got the greatest husband on earth she'll feel like man this is I, I love being married to this guy and likewise if the husband is feeling respect from the wife now that's how you can empower your partner amen the third paragraph i'm going to read it since uh it's it's like you're 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 looking at my notes dennis but mm -hmm. uh, it's it's the word of god it's the holy spirit it's the truth that is there regardless of people just Look to the God. Uh, I said, Jesus trusts God totally. He, Jesus trusts God totally. He totally trusts in God, the Father, and refuses to listen to another voice like Satan in the wilderness or men tempting him on earth. Likewise, the wife is supposed to listen to her husband and not listen to other voices, especially men's voices as this is out of order and could lead to false loyalty and emotional ties. Husbands are to love and be loyal to their wives and not have other women occupy their time or friendships. Dennis? You know, the uh, Proverbs 31, 10 through 12 says, an excellent wife, or as uh, another translation says, one of noble character, who can find? She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will lack no have uh, lack of no gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. You know, this is really speaking about just. Uh, I think it has a lot to do with uh, how you put your focus, how you where you where you put your your emotions, where you put your uh, thoughts, and I think a, a, a woman of uh, noble character or an excellent wife, uh, you know, we, they they just carry themselves in such a beautiful way. There's there's something about a woman who is, you know, that person who is who is empowering her husband, her character, her her ways, her the way she she talks, the way she communicates, empowers him, and. You know, and an empowered husband is one who's going to succeed in life. Well, so true. I've got husbands are to lead their wives, lead their families. Ephesians 5.23, for the husband is the head of the wife and also Christ is the head of the church and he is a savior of the body. Husbands are to love their wives as their own body. Ephesians 5.28. So husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. And husbands are to focus on their wives and no others. Proverbs 5.20. For why should you, my son, be enraptured by an immoral woman and be embraced in the arms of, of a seductress? Dennis? You know, I had an opportunity to uh, visit a friend of mine who was living in Mexico, and he had MS. And he was limited to basically using two of his fingers. And it, it was a trying time of his life. And his wife had left for a couple of weeks, and he had a beautiful, beautiful home, beautiful, one of the most beautiful gardens I've ever been in. And we were sitting in this garden talking, and my friend opened up and began to share with me. And he said to me, he said, you know, my wife, she takes all the credit for everything. And he was a lovely man. He was a beautiful brother. He, he, he uh, People loved him. He had been a pastor for many, many years. Uh, I, I've never seen uh, a church that was more in love with their pastor than they were with him. But for, somehow 
the wife had forgot to honor the husband and she was putting herself first. And when it came to the children, the grandchildren, it was always all about her, what she was doing, you know, all, always kind of building herself up in the eyes of the family, but never building up this man who deserved to be honored and built up and, 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 uh, you know, and I, and I thought to myself, you know, if, 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 if she understood how it would empower her, if she empowered him, you know, if she was to honor him, if she was to elevate him in the eyes of the family, if she was to lift him up, it would lift her up because everybody would go, wow, look, um, and I won't use her name, but you know, look, she's, she's honoring the husband. I remember we were in Russia and we, I was part of a team there ministering uh, this the local school. We were out far away from Moscow, about a thousand miles and a local school opened up and said, you guys can stay here. So our team of about 25 people were staying in this school. And then uh, the, pres the president of the school wanted to meet us. And so we, we, the leadership came and we sat and he did not speak English. His wife spoke English. But everything she said was to magnify him. Everything she said was to lift him up. She always respected him. And, and I felt such admiration for her because of the way that she respected him. I think there's, there's a tremendous, tremendous power that we can walk in when we uh, follow the scriptures. And, we, and there's wisdom. There's wisdom in the word. And there's wisdom in what God is telling us to do. And when we uh, follow that word and we say, man, I'm going to love my wife, you know, and that means loving my wife like Christ loved the church. I'm going to love my wife, but I, I, I love myself. That's in the word too. And then, uh, wives, as you honor your husband, as you appreciate him, as you say things to him uh, that res that show your respect, even at times you may have to feel, you may have to go against your emotions. But if you'll follow the word and you'll do that, you empower him, and he'll come up. He will come up. He doesn't have to be pushed down. He doesn't have to be criticized. Just speak words of life to him speak words that that speak into his heart because there's nobody on the planet earth that has more power than the wife to speak to her husband a million people could say good things about him but when you speak it speaks volumes yeah that, that's beautiful and it shows how really insensitive this woman was that uh here her husband really needs affirmation and certainly he had to contribute to that beautiful environment. And so uh, it would be like Jesus not giving God credit for the role of God. So, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's very sad, but uh, we, we need to affirm one another. I've got husbands are to treat their wives with gentleness, never harshly. Colossians 3.19, husbands, love your wives. Do not be bitter toward them. Husbands are to praise their wives, not criticize or condemn. Proverbs 31, 28. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. And then husbands are to honor their wives. Hebrews 13, 4. Marriage is an honorable among all, the bed undefiled. The fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. Dennis? Yes, and you know, it says in uh, 1 Corinthians eleven three, but I want you to understand that the head of every man is Christ. The head of every wife is her husband, and the head of Christ is God. Now, what does that mean? That means that God has a governmental order. I can remember being uh, with a group of men. We were praying for a state. It was about 300 pastors, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, he said, Revival will not come to this state until my government comes first. And, and so it's really critical that we don't just throw out scriptures we don't like, because I know this one for some people is one that, hey, I, I don't know if I, if I really want to uh, embrace that. But if we embrace it as the Lord intends, and so the wife submitting to the husband is as unto the Lord. Okay, so I'm trusting the Lord that as I submit to this man, 
that you will uh, you will bring order where there's disorder. And I know in my life where my wife has chosen to uh, submit, um, and I know that's a horrible word for some people, but uh, you know, just just to follow the scripture, uh, I'll tell you the the hound dog of heaven gets on my tail real quick. And I've had the Lord correct me because when, when she comes into proper order, it brings me into order. And so I've had my life corrected. I've had my, uh, the Lord deal with me. Uh, and then uh, if, if we choose not to be in order, then we have to deal with the disorder, the results of it. Well, it's like Jesus. He certainly did not agree uh, as far as wanting to do everything that God's will was, like in the garden. If you can take this cup away from me, do it. But not my will, but yours be done. So uh, he was in order and he followed the will of God regardless of personal feelings. And he knew he was going to go through a lot of suffering and pain. But he followed God's will and salvation, redemption is available for the entire world. Yeah, absolutely correct. You know, my wife and I, we've been married for 45 years, uh, same woman, and and we've chosen to uh, follow the word. And has it been easy? No. At times it can be diff very difficult. But I know that the more I allow God to work in my heart, the more I find uh, there's peace in my home, there's uh, prosperity, there's joy. And it, and, you know, and that goes back to the husband loving the wife, and, and you know, when I find myself, and then, and then, let me back up the train a little bit. You know, when I find myself being in that position where I'm yielding to the headship of Christ in my life, when I find I'm doing that, I find it brings tremendous blessing into my home, and and uh, and into my uh, family, my children, my grandchildren, and so. Uh, we're we're really talking today about living a life that empowers your partner, but it does more than empower your partner. It empowers your whole family, it empowers the life of your children and your grandchildren and your great grandchildren. It empowers all those that you that are influenced uh, by your life. And so, uh, I think I think the work of the devil is to bring chaos and to cause us to to want to. Uh, fight the system, cause us to uh, walk away from, from biblical values. But I think if we submit to the biblical values and we submit to the word of God, uh, it will bring a blessing. It will, it will bring us a life that works. Wonderful. You know, according to experts, the four needs of a man, one, respect, two, sex, friendship, fun, four, support trust and approval, four needs of a woman, security, non-sexual affection, open communication, husbands to lead. Dennis? Well, that's a, that's, that's a good uh, understanding. And I think what we're really talking about today is we're talking about taking things to another level. You know, um, you know we, we know that our God created us and he doesn't make mistakes. He's not, he's not one that He's trying to make our life miserable. He's one that's trying to, to empower our life. And, and when we uh, see the word of God and we say, this, this is what the word says. This is, this, is my, this is what God wants me to do. And we submit to that, uh, not saying we, come, we, we become a doormat, but we submit to it out of fear and reverence to God. Then we trust him to bring things in order. I've, I've learned, you know, I've been around this, this mountain many times and I've learned over and over again that if I will relax and let God take control, I don't have to take control. If Amen. I, if I, uh, if I'm in a situation and I feel like I'm not being respected, if I back up and say, Lord, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just quietly submitting to you. If, so, if, if someone has an argument with me, if I just quietly listen to the Holy spirit, give it, you know, some time, maybe, I'm I'm kind of a slow learner, maybe 20 seconds for me, maybe 10 for someone else. But it um, it allows you to to move in a peace and empowerment 
And, you know, my wife came up to me the other day and she said something that really bothered me. And then I, 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 I thought about it for a little bit and then I said, okay. And I just submitted to what she wanted. And it just brought tremendous peace into the room. And then we were, we were out of just a wonderful spirit. We were able to work things out and everybody felt really good about, about the outcome. But, you know, it, it doesn't always come out that way if you defend yourself. It doesn't always come out that way if you, if you stand up for your rights. And, uh, and, and your right is to trust the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been watching, listening, the warning program. Dr. Jonathan Hansen, president of World Ministries International, Eagle Saving Nations, worldministries.org, worldministries.org. Special guest, apostolic leader, Dennis Moore, talking on living a life that empowers your partner. May God richly bless you. Tune in again tomorrow as we continue with this subject. God bless you.